Hello and welcome everyone. Myself Minakshi and today what we are going to discuss is about the antifungal drugs. As the name suggests, the drugs that are used against fungal infections are called antifungal drugs. Infectious disease produced by the fungi are called mycoses. So the drugs that are used against mycoses are called antifungal drugs. In this presentation, we are going to discuss about the mode of infection of different uh, antifungal drugs. Let's go through it. First, we will go through the introduction of antifungal drugs. So, the most patients that are susceptible to uh, fungal infection are immunocompromised patients, the patients that has low immune power. Next is the patient that are on long term of antibiotic treatment like the person suffering from the diseases and has long term antibiotic treatment. These two type of patients are more susceptible to fungal infections. So next thing is that the uh, key points that make fungi different from another microorganism. First is they contain an acetyl glucosamine in their cell membrane. Next thing is that it contain ergosterol and cell membrane. These two things make them different. And all the fungal drugs, antifungal drugs are based on the inhibition of these two things. Okay. So first we will go through the, okay, here different antifungal drugs are given. First is amphotericin B. Next is flucytosine. Third one is azole, fourth one is echinocandens, fifth one is terbinophene. So let's go through the amphotericin B first. As you can see, amphotericin B. Now how amphotericin B acts on fungal cell and how it, it disturbs the fungal cell, we will study in this. So first, uh, suppose this is amphotericin B and this one is our fungal cell. Now what does it do? It will bind to the cell membrane of the fungi. It will bind to the cell membrane. Next thing it will, after binding it will create, it will make pores inside the cell membrane because of which all the cellular material, all the cellular component present inside the cell membrane comes out into the surrounding that leads to the damage of fungi cell. Okay, in this way amphotericin work. So first it will bind to the cell membrane as you can see here. Next thing is that it will create pores in the cell membrane from which all the cellular material leaks out into the surrounding membrane. This leads to the disruption of fungal cell. Next we will go through the flu cytosine. Okay. So now how does flu cytosine work? First thing is that it will uh, go, it will, the fungal cell, uh, it has the different like a specific receptor through which the flu cytosine bind. It is taken by the cytosine permease. So flu cytosine binds to the cytosine permease and it will internalize into the cytosine permease where what will happen inside the cytosine permease there will be intracellular deamination that is the removal of amino group from amino acid. So next thing is that there will be the intracellular deamination because of which flu cytosine will convert into 5 fluorouracil. Okay. Flu cytosine uh, works in two ways. First it will inhibit the protein synthesis here it is given it will inhibit the protein synthesis next thing is that it will inhibit the dna synthesis so after intracellular deamination it will convert into 5 fluorouracil next thing is that in case of protein synthesis okay now we are going to uh, discuss the case of protein synthesis like how it inhibit the protein synthesis after uh, deamination it will convert into 5 uracil fluorouracil and further it will convert into 5-fluorouridine triphosphate and what will happen then this 5-fluorouridine triphosphate will internalize into RNA. It will 
internalize into RNA template it will like it will bind into RNA that makes RNA abnormal ठीक है जो एक RNA था उसमें सिर्फ उसका जो DNA का था वो वो coding होनी चाहिए थी लेकिन अब क्या हुआ कि RNA में five fluorouridine triphosphate जाके घुस गया जिसकी वजह से जो normal RNA था वो अब अब normal हो गया अब ये अब नॉर्मल आर एन ए अमाइनो एसिड्स बनाएगा ट्रांसलेशन होगा अब नॉर्मल अमाइनो अब नॉर्मल आर एन ए का जब ट्रांसलेशन होगा तो अब ये अब नॉर्मल आर एन ए एक अब नॉर्मल प्रोटीन बनाएगा जिसकी वजह से क्या होगा प्रोटीन सिंथेसिस अपने आप ही इनहिबिट हो जाएगा सो so, इस तरीके में फ्लोरोसाइटिसिन विल इनहिबिट दी फंगल सेल प्रोटीन सिंथेसिस नेक्स्ट इज हाउ इट विल इनहिबिट दी डी एन ए सिंथेसिस वट इट विल डू आफ्टर डी एमिनेशन ऑफ फ्लूसाइटोसिन फाइव फ्लूरोसल इज मेड नाउ फॉर द फाइव फ्लूरोसल इज कन्वर्टेड इन टू फाइव फ्लूरो डी ऑक्सी यूरिडीन मोनोफॉसफेट एंड वट डज इट विल डू इट विल इनहिबिट द इंजाइम दैट इज थाट सिंथेटेज इट विल इनहिबिट दिस इंजाइम दैट विल लेट टू फॉर द इनिबिशन ऑफ डी एन ए सिंथेसिस एंड दिस वे फ्लूरोसाइटोसिन वर्क नेक्स्ट वी हैव इज एजोल्स एजोल इज वन ऑफ द अनदर इम्पॉर्टेंट एंटी फंगल ड्रग हेयर इट इज गिवन पी फोर फोर फिफ्टी इंजाइम आर्गोस्ट्रॉल नाउ वट डज इट मीन एज वट डज एजोल डू एजोल will inhibit this synthesis of argosterol we all know that argosterol is the main component of cell membrane which defines its shape and structure if argosterol is not uh, if we inhibit the synthesis of argosterol then there will be no shape no structure hence the cell will damage fungal cell will damage so what does azole do it will binds to the enzyme that is P450 enzyme that is responsible for argosterol synthesis it will bind to this enzyme it will uh, inhibit the activity of this enzyme hence argosterol is not synth uh, synthesized because of which the fungal cell will damage now we will go through the brief discussion how azole work so first it, it is given free azole nitrogen it binds to the C14 alpha dimethylase that inhibits the demethylation of lanosterol lanosterol is the precursor of argosterol it is just like a parent of argosterol from which the argosterol is made so lanosterol is parent for argosterol uh, here if uh, lanosterol demethylation occur then what will happen argosterol deprive like uh, there will be deficiency of argosterol argosterol will not synthesize and this leads to the accumulation of 40 alpha methyl esterol that will disturb the cell membrane cell gro growth cell growth uh, function of the cell all the function all the structure will be destroyed because of which fungal cell will be damaged next we will go through is echinocandens echinocandens now what does echinocandens do uh, they are mostly used in case of candidal infection like they are mostly used in case of candida species now there is a mechanism in the fungal cell first we will discuss the mechanism that is happening in the fungal cell that uh, echinocandens is going to disrupt so uh, fungal cell most of the pathogenic fungi contain 1 3 beta d glycans okay these beta uh, these glycans <laughs> when combined with chitin they provide <coughs> sorry they provide a strength and shape to the cell these chitin and glycan both together provides strength and shape to the fungal cell and these uh, chitin and glycan is responsible for osmo uh, osmotic integrity that is responsible for cell division and growth of fungal cell so what does echinocandens do it will inhibit the synthesis of 13 beta d glycan because of which this whole mechanism is inhibited 
of if the in uh, this whole mechanism is inhibited there will be no cell division there will be no cell growth hence the cell that is fungal cell will be destroyed so yes first it will uh, inhibit the synthesis of glycan synthetase next it will unmarks the 1 3 beta d glycan and the last thing is that it will induce pro inflammatory cytokine releases from the host cell what will it do it will release the pro pro inflammatory cytokines from host that will disturb the fungal cell next what we are going to discuss this is our last topic that is terbinafine okay so uh, here is the mechanism in the fungal cell that will terbinafine disrupt that will terbinafine uh, inhibit first we will go through the mechanism that is going on in the fungal cell so uh, fungal cell contain a squalene okay that is convert squalene is one of the important component for fungal cell okay so squalene is converted into squalene 2 3 epoxide with the help of squalene epoxidase enzyme that is responsible for formation of lanosterol uh, that is a precursor for ergosterol so sabse pehle squalene squalene ko squalene epoxidase enzyme convert karta hai squalene 2 epoxide mein jisse ki lanosterol banta hai aur aage lanosterol se ergosterol banta hai ergosterol kya hai ek important सेलुलर मेम्ब्रेन कंपोनेंट है जो कि फंगल सेल को स्ट्रक्चर शेप और फंक्शंस में हेल्प करता है सो नेक्स्ट इज वट विल टर्बिनाफीन डू टर्बिनाफीन विल इनहिबिट द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ स्क्वेलिन एपॉक्सीडेज दैट इज एन एंजाइम दैट इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर कन्वर्जन ऑफ स्क्वेलिन इंटू स्क्वेलिन टू थ्री एपॉक्सीडेज ओके एपॉक्साइड सॉरी so it will inhibit the squalene epoxidase activity hence the ergosterol will not form if ergosterol is not formed there then there will be no shape no function no cell growth in the fungal cell ultimately it will disturb the fungal cell next here it is given accumulation of squalene in the fungal cell as also fungal uh, also shows the fungicidal effects to the fungal cell okay so this is the end of our today's presentation hope you understand it like it and thank you very much stay safe stay healthy thank you